Hi, my name is TJ Lambert. I will be presenting this IMU project. So the first thing we will want to do is find the initial rotation matrix. We can use the first reading in the given accelerometer data and normalize it, and that will be our gravity vector. And then we'll also want to find a north vector, um, but since we don't have a north direction, we will just find a vector that is orthogonal to the gravity vector. After we have our gravity and our north vectors, we're going to be able to uh, manipulate this matrix and then end up with three equations that we can set up as a system of equations and solve for the entire R matrix. The next step that we need to do is actually count the steps in this path. So a lot of the things that we're about to do come from MP1. We're going to take our accelerometer data, find the magnitude of each time step, um, put them through some filters, and then we're going to look for peaks. In MP1, we want to find all steps, so we looked for all the peaks. However, in this project, we only want to find the steps taken by the main foot, which is the foot that has the phone in the pocket. So we're going to go through our peaks and find the five highest values. Then we're going to go through our acceleration list again, and we're only going to add a peak if it's greater than three-fifths of the fifth highest peak. And if we added the previous peak, we're not going to look at this peak. Here are the plots of my step counting data. The blue dots represent where the main foot is hitting the ground. And to find where the not main foot is hitting the ground, we're just going to take the places in between those peaks. The next step is to do gyroscope integration. A lot of this is really similar to MP2, so I won't go through all the details. However, one difference is that we're going to take the dot product of each dr matrix for this foot step, and we're going to store that in dr total. To calculate step direction, we're going to take our dr total, and we're going to find our axis of rotation from it by using the equation on the right. If we're doing a step with the main foot, we're going to rotate the axis of rotation by 90 degrees along the z-axis. But if we're doing a step with the opposite foot, we want to rotate the axis of rotation by negative 90 degrees along the z-axis so that our system knows we're still moving in the forward direction. We'll then take the x and y components from the axis of rotation, normalize them and multiply them by the step length, and then update our current position. The last step is calculating a step length. I tried a few different methods in order to find a dynamic step length, but none of them resulted in graphs better than just using a constant step length. So for the constant step length size, I just found the average step length for a human and used that.